most of us, or I think nearly all of us, have just seen the film Sumu, and um, I'm very happy to hand over the mics to uh, Konstantin and Jaron, who will do the Q&A with the director Kaspar Kinzinger here via Zoom. Enjoy. Great, yeah, thank you. So uh, we're really excited that we have the opportunity to speak with Casper today. I don't know if he's already with us in the Zoom call. Okay, so maybe beforehand you will have the opportunity to ask questions as well. We will start with one or two of our own questions and then we will open the mic and give you the opportunity to ask Casper whatever you want, whatever interests you. And just so that you're not irritated, we will look into that camera if we ask the question, so, yeah. Uh, good morning, Casper. Can you hear us? <laughs> Casper, can you hear us? Hello? Hello? Can oh. you hear me? This mic, I guess. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, I think... Or is it just, can you hear this mic? <laughs> okay, so this mic. <laughs> I, I can hear you. Okay, great, thank you. Now I have two microphones. Um, thanks a lot for being with us here today. We came right out of the cinema. We just watched Tsumu together. And uh, yeah, I think when walking out of the cinema, uh, I felt like everybody was really moved. I, I saw that like most people were... Yeah, the movie made something with them. Um, we are going to ask you one or two questions, and afterwards we're going to open the mic and uh, give everyone in the room the opportunity to ask questions to you. And uh, for starting out, we just wanted to um, address the elephant in the room because we're part of the documentary section, and you decided to pick a very special format for your documentary. You decided to give uh, young people, to give the youth the, their own voice, you decided to give them their own cameras and we wanted to ask you in which, at which time in the process of making this film you made that decision, was it clear for you from the beginning on that this was the way you wanted to tell their story and yeah, why did you make that decision? Um, it was, an, hello everyone, um, it was, uh, and thank you for having me, um, it was for me, it was very clear in the beginning that I need to make a movie uh, together with Aino and Lars and the youth in the Silag. So it was very important that it was from their perspective. And I'm not from uh, East Greenland. I'm, I'm from Copenhagen. And, and um, therefore, I, I get them some cameras and then we could, you know, starting to to make the film together because I was in this movie, I, I started to film about two and a half years ago. And um, we start to film the movie for two and a half years ago. And um, I live in Dasilak for a month and then going back to Copenhagen. And uh, then I was there for some months and then back to Dasilak and so on. And when I was not in Dasilak, it was very important for me that they could film and um, and we and and we could actually use their recordings uh, like a a body in the film, so I could you know see where are they now, what did they feel, and we could talk about their feelings and um, yeah, so so. It was very important that they make the movie together with me, uh, and therefore they, they, I give them the camera from the beginning. Okay, so originally, we, originally we also had one of the um, protagonists here in the Q and A, but I think um, there was an issue there. So I will ask you the question instead. Do you know um, how they got into the whole camera situation? How they adapted to that, or 
if it was like naturally for them to just talk to, to a camera? I think it was, it's not, you know, it's not natural, but, you know, we use TikTok, we use Instagram, we use social media. So I don't think it was not unnatural for them to, to use the camera. And they have this theater group um, where they talk a lot uh, and where they, uh, you know, where they try to express themselves. And this camera was a little bit like to be in the theater group. So I think the theater group and also the camera was, was, um, was kind of kind the same. Um, so, so, um, I don't think it was so unnatural for them. Okay, great. So now we would open the room for questions from the audience. Lauren has a microphone that he can give around. Is there anybody that would like to ask Casper anything? Um, hello, thank you for this strong film. Um, I would like to know to whom your protagonist address the film with the parents or adults or for a younger audience? I, I think I hear the whole question, but, but uh, they really, the main character, Lars and I know, they really love the film and um, and the film means a lot for them. Uh, but I was in Dasilak for a month ago uh, to to show the film in the city uh, in Dasilak in East Greenland, and um, there was a lot of youth in uh, to the screening, and uh, it was fantastic to meet them again and to show the film. And um, we have a, we talk a lot after the screening. We make a big circle uh, where we sit and uh, talk about the film and um, how they feel about to watch themselves. Um, and I also think that this film, I have, uh, I, I got a lot of message from parents and from adults and from, yeah, a lot of people in Dasilak after it was showing in the city and also it has the Greenlandic premiere in Nuuk, uh, also from months ago, uh, the biggest city in in, um, in Greenland. And uh, everybody, also the parents uh, and the adults in this in the city, um, talk, is very happy about the film because now they have a document to talk about. And now they can, you know, uh, see what the young people struggle with and um what i also talk with lars and uh, his mom about that after the film came out and uh, we show last mom the film uh, they have actually starting to talk to each other again so i think this this film is yeah has been very important for their relationship to to starting to to talk to each other again and maybe also accept what has happened and um, how their relationship can be in the future. And do you think that um, the documentary genre is the only genre that could have made this kind of discussion possible, or um, do you know how how the whole uh, protagonists feel about? About that? Oh, can you try to say that, Christian? Yeah. Sorry. Um, if the documentary genre is the only genre possible to start a discussion for these types of, for these stories, or for for this story in particular. No, I think also the theater group in um, in the sea, like I know, and last theater group, it's has all, uh, it has also start a discussion in the city. Um, but I think everybody in the city, they, when they heard about 
the CLAC. And when they read article in the newspaper uh, or in the television about the CLAC, it's always with a negative voice. Uh, it's always about suicide, um, abuses, and uh, big alcohol problems. And I think this film is show both one of the negative sites to live in in um, the Silak, but there is also a lot of hope and um, and also some positive stories in this in this film. So I think it's um, yeah for for the people in the Silak, it's very it's a little bit more or what is it called nuance uh, a whole picture of the Silak and and uh, to live in the city. Um, hi, I'm Katharina, I'm a producer from Berlin. I'm, thanks so much for this film. I'm still blown away. I still haven't really found my words, I think. Um, and, well, talking about the hope, I wanted to know where have you been when you started developing the project and how much hope did you have that you can actually tell something that gives us hope in this world? Um, because we just, like, after afterwards talking with colleagues here, like, it's a project that is so hard to sell. I can totally imagine the challenge and honestly also nightmare to make this film. And the questions like, oh, why, oh, it's too tough. Uh, how can we relate to those kind of problems? And it's like that this film exists is like a little miracle in my eyes, like, because the market would not allow this film to exist if, if there weren't people like you just fighting for those precious pearls and gems to, to be seen. So congrats <laughs> and uh, respect. And maybe you can tell a bit about this process of financing and selling your idea and what you had in your hands or what you were hoping for silently. And like, yeah, you understand my question. Maybe. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, to begin with, I was for nine years ago. I was in Dasilak because I was studying to be a school teacher in in Copenhagen. And um, before I traveled to to Dasilak, I um, had read a lot of articles and I saw some yeah, television from the city. And everybody told me, uh, and I could also read that this is a dark place. Uh, this is a place where young people, I talked with some teachers uh, from the city before I, I came to Tasilak, and they told me, this place, nobody dreams, and uh, young people in Tasilak, they they can't dream. And um, when they finish school, they starting to have some suicide uh, thoughts, and then they kill themselves. So I was prepared to to came to this dark place. Uh, but what I met, it was some fantastic young people. And I was starting to think about how, why do we always um, think about and also uh, talk about all the negative stuff? Because here I could see there was a lot of hope. There was a lot of young people dreaming and um, and and then for three years ago, um, I, I I read an article uh, again about um, the city, and uh, it was again with all these negative, uh, yeah, stories. Uh, and then I began to stalking around uh, social media, uh, Instagram and Facebook, and I found I know, and I found Lars, and I found some of the young people in the city, and I could, and then I began to chat with them and. Uh, FaceTiming with them and I could really see that there was a lot of hope and that they want, I know want with the theater group to make a revolution in the city. So I was yeah, totally in in love with Lars and I know from the beginning. And then I took to Dasila uh, to start uh, to meet them. And uh, I took uh, from the beginning, I have some cameras with me to them and um, and we began to talk about how we can make this film and um, and and they want to they really want to make a film uh, to 
both in Greenland, but also in the whole world, that we could show uh, how important it is to, to tell their story uh, and to show that, um, that there is hope uh, and it matters to live and it matters to fight for, for your dreams. And um, I film something and went back to Copenhagen and um, talked with the Danish Film Institute uh, and said to them, I think I have um, a documentary here and I think I have a fantastic documentary and you need to believe me uh, and you need to believe the character because we can make a very strong and impact documentary. Um, and then I show them some material and they were yeah totally blown away. And I took to uh, Tromsø Film Festival, International Film Festival to pitch the film and meet some uh, some from the Swedish Film Institute and some broadcasters and yeah and I was uh, I was very um, I talk a lot about hope and I talk a lot about dreams and I talk a lot about the positive uh, stories from from the city and also that I think this is a very unique story but also universal story that uh, a lot of young people around the world can can see themselves in and um, yeah the the decision makers and the uh, the broadcasters and the swedish and the danish film institute they believe me and uh, and and give me some money to make this film and then we could start that sounds really interesting um, another question that I've asked myself is um, how much involvement did the protagonists have in the actual process of cutting the movie? Because they were obviously very involved in the filming, um, but the format, like the music you chose, the backgrounds you chose, look very young, look yeah, just like the actors. So how, how much did they, were they involved in this process? We talk a lot about, you know, they, they love... Uh, Murray, they love Billie Eilish, they love uh, Beyonce, and um, they love techno and electronic music. So I really want to have their music, have their sound uh, in the film. And uh, I um, I try to, I, I write a lot of uh, messages to Beyonce and <laughs> to Billie Eilish, but it was, uh, and I, I was very near to, to close uh, Beyonce, uh, but it was fucking expensive. So, uh, so Mö, uh, the Danish artist Mö, she wants, she really wants the the film, and um, and uh, therefore there's something some from Mö in the film, and uh, we make the music together with um, a group called Ow Ow Ow. Um, it's a Danish group and a Danish techno electronic group that they really love to. To listen to, uh, so we we make something, yeah, sound with them and um, the colors. Uh, I was very inspiring to, you know, to hang out with Aino and Lars and Thomas and the young people because they use a lot of colors and I see them. They are so colorful. Uh, so I really want their, you know, the makeup, uh, the color from their makeup, the bubbles. Uh, they are for me. They are like colorful bubbles, and uh, I, I I want to have a lot of yeah colors and uh, bubbles in this film. So we talk a lot about how we can how the film can f feel like a colorful film, and then we f filming some close uh, makeup. Uh, colorful makeups things and um yeah starting to to do something in after effects and then we yeah have this colorful montage uh weird yeah <laughs> uh stuff um so in the and we also you know when we make the film we talk a lot about the film and the process and uh and also when i start to edit the film together with the 
editor Sasha uh, from Sweden. We also talk a lot with, uh, especially Lars and I know how we should make the film uh, in the end, uh, also in the editing. But I think that this film is not, you know, make in the editing process. It's make when we film uh, because we film. Uh, I write a lot, and then we make some scenes, um, and um, yeah, and the in the end we we have the film. So they were we 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 really make made this film together. Okay. And there are more questions in the audience. Okay. Hi. So, as a young adult who has seen how that changes a person, how did the tragedy that happened in the family of the main protagonist change the way and the perspective the film was going? And also, a small side question: How old were they when they were filming this? Nineteen years old um, when we start, um, and. Uh, Mm. Oh, can you try to repeat the first question, sorry. Um, how did the tragedy that happened in the family of the main protagonist change the perspective and the way the film was going? Because it probably wasn't the, like something you were uh, thinking it would happen. So, no. yeah. How did it change the ways it was going? Um, it was... Uh, of course, it was very tough, and uh, it has been very tough to deal with. Uh, and we talk a lot, uh, Lars, the main uh, protagonist, and me, about how uh, how this will, uh, yeah, what what? Because I was to begin with, I was. Uh, very nervous to, to yeah, I haven't tried this before to deal with a suicide and I haven't uh, tried to, to, uh, to film uh, and to make movies about this. And when last sister uh, took her own life, um, me and last, and also uh, I, I talk a lot with some uh, cycle psychologic uh, to to hear from their perspective what what they what uh, did they think about to make this film uh, because we we were just in the beginning of the film um, but talking with Lars talking with Aino talking with the theater group talking with Lars mom talking with the psychologics and um, and also the Danish Film Institute about um about last sister we we i was like this is a part of last life and last was also it's important for me to show the dark side in it's also very important for me to tell this story because um because last loved his sister and he really loved his sister's kids but he also really wants to to uh, give last sister's kids a new life and not the same life like his sister and him has grown up so it was very important for last to tell this story and um and therefore we we uh, we we yeah we um we follow his story and also follow this um, this story about uh, his sister and um, his sister's suicide. When preparing for the screening, um, we thought a lot about uh, how to deal with the yeah very heavy topics that are discussed in the movie. Um, and we at this festival decided to give a content warning, but also here at the festival there is different opinions on how to deal with topics like these. Um, how do you think uh, is our, our film supposed to deal with those topics? How are they supposed to maybe warn the audience before they're confronted with something like that? Did you think about that in the process of creation? 
I think uh, I think it's very important to to talk, and I think it's very important to show the reality, and um, I think it's very important to um, to talk about these problems because in Dasila, before the theater group, and uh, before the yeah the the young people starting to talk, uh, nobody has talk in this city and it is one of the things that i think uh, that there is so many suicide in the um, in the city is because no one talk about how they feel um and how it is to to grow up in in the city so it's very important that that we talk and it's very important that we talk to together um yeah so so for me this film show that it is important to talk about the, the dark side and it's important to talk about suicide and uh, sexual abuses and alcohol problem. And yeah, and if we not talk, um, we, can, we can end up like, like, Dasilak before the young people make this small revolution. Um, yeah, so it's very important. Okay, so I think we have time for one final question. Two final questions, okay. Um, so, um, go ahead. So thank you so much for this wonderful film. I, I must say I was really moved. I, I was speechless after the, <laughs> seeing it. Um, you, you told us uh, how the collaborative process was in, in making this film with uh, the people, the, your characters. Uh, was there any moment where you as a filmmaker had to make a decision or cho uh, ch uh, choose anything which wasn't collaborative, which was your own perspective as a filmmaker? And also, was there any, um, any uh, producers or funders or whatever who had to say, who, who, had to, uh, who, who influenced the process of this film? Um, of course, there was, a, there was a lot of, you know, um, I took a lot of decision because I found it very important to to tell a story where we could understand the characters because it is a documentary, it is a movie, and um, and I also took a decision that we need to focus on on some of the positive stories. Because there was some, there was, yeah, a lot of uh, suicides when we film, uh, also in the theater groups, and and um, and it was important for me that we that we still uh, talk about the positive stories also, but um, and but it was very important for me that the financial partners and also the producers not uh, told me what I should do and not told uh, me what Lars and Aino should do. So when I took a decision that the film needs to go in that direction, I talk with Lars and Aino and I talk with them and say, this is important that we need to talk a little bit more about this uh, or we need to do uh, a scene where we you know are with you in the theater group and um, talking about uh, this because we i i have a recording where you uh, talk about in your own camera about a situation in the theater group but i really want to see this situation um can we do something like that so of course, I'm I'm the director, and um, I, yeah, I, I I took a lot of decisions, uh, but it was always uh, decisions what where I talk with Lies and I know about these decisions. Okay, so uh, one final question now. Hi, I'm I'm Bern, filmmaker based in Berlin. Um, I. I just uh, saw 
that you wouldn't have this footage when uh, they shouldn't f wouldn't have filmed themselves those uh, when they are crying into the camera in those very dark moments you probably wouldn't uh, have filmed it in this moment or couldn't have because of your responsibility to step back uh, i wondered how how your protagonist uh, 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 reacted when they have seen themselves in the film in those very hard moments and if you you know if I, I, I think it's very very brave for from by them to to tell you you can keep it in the film yeah um, first time I uh, when we have a rough cut we show uh, Lars and I know the film the rough cut and uh, I was, yeah, totally nervous. Uh, but they see, they they watch the film, and then we um, we cry a lot, and um, and we s just say a little bit to each other, and then the next day we meet and uh, talk, and um, and. We talk a lot about, and no, not me. Lars and I not talk a lot about that. They they really loved the film, and they were very thankful as that that they could express themselves uh, how they actually feel. So they could see themselves in this film, um, and uh, and it was very important for them to to show their world. And and I think um, they are yeah very brave and they are big heroes. But but they this is actually their life and they can see themselves in the film and they can see themselves how we edit the film. Uh, so they were yeah happy about the um, how they shown and how how they are in the film. Yeah. Just another short question. Since theater is so important for your protagonists, uh, why did you together uh, decide to show us just the beginning and the ending of the actual uh, theater show in the night and uh, we couldn't see more of the theater play? Because to begin with, I thought that the theater group will be maybe the main character. Uh, so, but then I could see after some months that I know Lars, especially Lars, will be the main character. And therefore, I think the theater group was, should not feel so much. And therefore, the, the play in the end is not, uh, is just a, a small part of the film. Okay. Do we have time for one more question or is our time up? Up, but if it's a short question, we're not going to say no. Okay, then let's go for it. I think the question's here. Okay. Hi. What was the most important message you wanted to pass with this film? Mm, that it matters to speak up and that it matters to believing in yourself. Um, yeah, because I think... Lars and I know they, they show us that it matters. Um, and it matters to, to talk about our dreams and to talk to each other. Okay, thank you. I think that as well is a great sentence to finish our Q&A today. Thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed having you. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you uh, for watching the film. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see you again one day and uh, bye. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Maybe about two or three years. We'll yeah, see maybe. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye.